really excited to have a robust conversation on how we make this summer like a very active um, process for the community and organizations around all things community initiated projects. Um, but we'll, we'll have a much deeper conversation in a little bit. Um, and um, I think that's my my main thing that I'll that I will share. Um, next, we have new business. Um, so we have our budget update, including the forecast. Good evening. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go to the budget update section in your book. The very first page is the forecast. We're going to skip that for now. So let's go to the actuals year to date. And we'll run through that pretty quickly. We actually had a good month of spin. Um, um, but let me just run through the numbers real quick. Uh, I think everybody's probably more interested in the forecast at this point. But uh, we have $13.4 million uh, in sales tax revenue today. And again, I'm looking at the third column over. That's a little bit darker gray than everything else. Uh, we're looking at projected revenue for our year-to-date revenue is $13.9 million. Uh, and then we have expenses, 81,000 street repairs. Those street repairs are underway right now. So that money will be, those invoices, big invoices will be coming in pretty soon. And those invoices are using millions of dollars when we get them. So that'll be going up pretty quickly. Um, we go down to uh, the $532,000 number. That is downtown maintenance to landscaping and security. So we're approaching our budgeted number there. Uh, we'll probably reach budget from what I can tell from the expenses that are coming in. We'll probably hit the 650000 Again, just to refresh the commission's memory, this is the line item that will be eliminated after the fiscal year 25 is over. Uh, the, this, the Measure J commission, or the Measure J will not be funding that line item anymore. And then we go down to adopted capital projects. We've had about $6.4 million of spend. And if you will go to the projects in a minute and see where that's at. But we're right now we're projecting a, a surplus of three point year to date, 3.5 million. And again, I wouldn't get uh, too excited about that because with all the expenses we have coming into the streets, it's probably going to be eroded pretty quickly. I do want to bring one thing to mind. Um, and I forgot my detail page on this, but let's go back up and look at the airport reserve on aviation fuel, that 500,000. So after our sales tax consultants got to dig in a little bit to uh, that number. And just to refresh everybody's memory, this is where the FAA had um, mandated uh, to all um, cities with airports that any sales tax that's paid on aviation fuel, that sales tax that the city receives has to be set aside for airport projects. And, you know, the airport came and we, they've got a few projects with what we had projected earlier this year, and the amount we projected is about 1.5 million. Well, that was a good estimate up until about a couple of years ago when sales tax started really increasing for the city, for general fund and for Measure J. Uh, last couple of years, we've had received about $600,000 in sales tax uh, on aviation fuel that needs to be set aside. So the number that we see at the very bottom, second line from the bottom, the 2.67 million that's an adjusted number and it's actual, so it's up from 1.5 million. So the airport has about an additional million dollars that uh, they can use for airport projects. Um, I have told the executive director and the airport administration manager that uh, we have adjusted their number. Um, the airport commission will find this out next month and I'm sure they're going to be chomping at the bit to find, to find something to use it for. So um, we have, so, Knowing the number the last couple of years has been around five or six hundred thousand, we've adjusted our estimated amount to be five hundred thousand. We should be getting actual amounts every quarter going forward from our sales tax consultants. So we'll start turning that estimated amount probably into, into an actual amount when we get to the next fiscal year. So um, we do anticipate it'll be around five hundred thousand because sales tax has been pretty steady for both the general fund and the city for the last few years. Um, question, Chris. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. So, the the two hundred thousand that we've been using is low, and moving forward, we'll go up to five hundred thousand every year. Mm -hmm. But then it's adjusted every quarter. Yeah. Or we'll, we'll, how do how do we just correct. help, help we'll, me understand the adjustment period? We'll budget five hundred thousand, but then when we present our actuals year to date, we'll, we will make that an actual number when we get the number from our sales tax consultants every quarter. Okay. 
Okay. So we'll be able to see how good our budget is. So then did you just move that from our regular measure J restricted? Yeah, uh, so it really just comes out of the fund balance. Okay. Yeah, so the restricted mm -hmm. balance for those airport reserves is really just a restriction on the fund balance. Um, the entire Measure J fund is restricted, but this particular subset of that total amount of restriction. So whenever they use it, it just comes out of the fund balance. And maybe just one thing to think about when presenting this new number to the airport commission is um, we've never really had kind of like a regular process in which they present projects, and not that they need to, but it's something for them to consider, like if they want to make like an annual plan, say this is how we want to use, or if it's, you know, we're going to come back into, we're going to finish the future plan at a certain time point, but just to have on our radar, like if and when we should be expecting an airport kind of proposal, um, because we haven't had to, we haven't done that really. Yeah, that's a very good point. And it is kind of new mm -hmm. to the commission and the city and the airport. So uh, knowing that maybe what we can do is make it part of our two-year budget process so we do yeah. get a heads up for that. Uh, okay, that's really, well, let's go to the projects and we can kind of talk about them where the most of the spend is. Um, that's the second page, the first fold-out page. Um, and if we go over to the second to the last column where the heading is FY23-24 expenditures, this is all the expenditures for the capital projects. And you can see the big project that is making real momentum to that spend is the LED lights at the parks. Mm -hmm. And uh, that project is, if not completed, it's finishing up. Yeah. And so we're getting final invoices in. We added, we added about a million dollars since last month, this line item. So they are really completing the project and it's, it's getting done. And we should be finishing up. We should be, we'll get finishing up invoices probably for the next couple of months. So that's the big spend. Um, See if I can look at anything else that really jumped up a lot over the next. Uh, the Plaza Theater, so it's kicking off, and we're starting to absorb some of those expenses uh, into Measure J. Um, you know, we set aside, we took our fire station money that we set aside, and we took our, uh, well, our fire station and some of our community integrated projects, and we converted that over to Plaza Theater. Mm -hmm. So you'll see some expense here, but what we're eventually gonna do is just transfer all of that $7 million out of this fund into our capital funds so that we don't have piles of money for the Plaza Theater sitting all over our balance sheet. We just wanna expend it out of one account. And that way, when we go, when that building is done and we place that asset in service, then we have it all in one account. So we'll probably at the end of this fiscal year, just transfer all that money out. So you'll see a big number coming out uh, either this year or big acre next year. That's really all I have to say there. We do have a, some spend on the community initiated projects, which is the next page over. Um, most everything stayed the same. We did add some significant expense on the shade structures at the animal shelter. That's project number six, kind of halfway down your sheet. So mm -hmm. that's really most of the new spend that is coming out of the pro uh, community initiated projects. And uh, that project is moving along pretty well. Completed, mm -hmm. you said completed. So we, we're again, that's another one where we'll get finishing invoices for the next couple of months. Uh, I don't really have anything to say on the actuals or the projects, but we can certainly talk about them right now before we make the forecast if the commission has any questions. Chris, on the drainage of Boys and Girls Club, the figure over their remaining balance is that money that needs to be used to complete that project? Yeah, so it's hard to account for and all this stuff, but really that's coming out of our budgeted overage. You know, we budgeted a million dollars for overages for projects. Mm -hmm. So that's going to come out of that pot of money. The roundabout. That's done. That's off council's plate, the roundabout. Council will, uh, will be discussing that at the next council meeting. Okay. So by Thursday, the agenda should be out and you can see kind of where, where the direction is going. Okay. Okay. The other thing is with the enormous airport project, two point what billion, how much will Major J help with that or be asked to help with that? Um, probably very little. I mean, the, the funding strategy hasn't came out yet. That's still being performed by a consultant. Uh, but it's so much money, uh, you know, we're going to have to find 
many alternative funding mm -hmm. sources for that. Uh, but that that funding plan is going to come out probably later on this year. Um, there, I think they're just starting it, so we got an idea. But it's really going to be multiple funding sources and. And Measure J, honestly, when we get out to funding the library and funding the fire station, there's probably not a whole lot of funding left over to fund $2.2 billion. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, we'll help where we can. You know, we've got something you know, off of their master plan. They've got $2.7 million to help with some stuff, you know, um, some of their smaller stuff, their low-hanging fruit. But for the big stuff, you know, it's it's probably going to come through somewhere else. Okay. The only other question, and I think you answered it. On that downtown maintenance, this time you have four hundred dollars. That's two hundred less than last time. Are we slowly getting our way out of that? Yeah. When does that actually end? Uh, well, contract? the contract is going to continue to keep going. The, the, the general fund will pick up that expense, so that contract won't end. As a matter of fact, I think we might be negotiating one right now, uh, an extension. But the the measure J will contribute four hundred thousand dollars to that next year. But after that, the general fund is going to pick it up. Okay, but we're not paying for security. No, no, okay. not yeah, right. right. Not not after after fiscal year twenty five. There will be this line item will be eliminated from the budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I have a couple, um, but I don't know if we want to do it now versus um, the capital uh, and or Joel's uh, presentation. But I had a couple questions around the um, community initiated projects. Um, it'd be really nice to get this list pretty small before <laughs> we, you guys all add a bunch more. Um, and so just wanted to check in on a few of these. I mean, the Victoria Park, I know that was supposed to be much earlier in the season. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great, David. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, regarding Victoria, good news on that is it, it is under construction. However, the shade structure piece of it, which is really the piece that's funded with Measure J, actually is complete. I think the last sales were going up today. Oh, and I didn't okay. get the pictures taken fast enough to share with the meeting tonight because I took them earlier this afternoon. But so that is some great news. And we'll we'll make sure we get some mm -hmm. better pictures for you guys. So that piece is, is up, and then yeah, now that the plate, once that's done, now the playground itself will start to be constructed essentially. Okay. What do we? I, I know it's not Measure J, but what's the timeline for the playground itself now? Probably going to be toward the end of June. There's going to be a grand opening that I don't know a date yet that that's sort of being worked on mm -hmm. and when it will actually open, but really probably toward the end of June when that happens. Um, okay, and then, um some of these smaller ones that say in process or planning, um, number four, the Desert Highland exercise equipment and the hiking trail maintenance. I know that there was talk of like working with another organization, oh, I'm sorry, of working with another organization sure. and um, like what, what steps are required for this to then say completed and then we like take it off the list. Absolutely. So the, I'll start with the exercise equipment number four. That one has, as, as does happen with these projects, that one's morphed into sort of a larger project. And so there are other things that are going to be happening at that park that need to happen first. Mm -hmm. So this will absolutely happen, but we can't do it first because then we would literally have to take it out to do mm -hmm. the other work. So we're going to be there will be things coming in the near future for that part, but it, it's now it's sort of a timing thing. And I'll, I'll have more detail on that probably in future meetings to give you some idea of the phases, but we're so early into it. I kind of don't want to get ahead of it yet, but that is, that's where that's at. Um, just so you guys are aware of that. And I will get you that, more, that information, hopefully in the next couple meetings, probably I'll be able to kind of give you an idea of what exactly is going to be done. So you'll, you'll see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then for the hiking trail maintenance, that one is moving along. We're making progress on that. My hope is to possibly, and I haven't spoken to Chris yet, but we're hoping to maybe 
have them present maybe the next uh, commission meeting if we can. So you understand uh, really what's going on and you can ask questions and all that. So we're getting pretty close. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then this is a question maybe for Joel or, or Chris, like how do we, there's been a few of these, right? And I think it's like a reflection of community initiated projects evolve and that's a sign of like other conversations that then um, happen based off of like, let's look at the Highland Park or James Odessi or whatever it might be. But like, I could see someone looking at this, you know, month after month after month, a year from now and be like, they never did anything on it. So how do we reflect when something has now kind of morphed into like this whole like bigger project, um, you know, swim center, Mm -hmm. um you know the the shade is now a whole new playground um desert highlands the exercise exercise equipment request is now sounds like a new revamp like um because it's still momentum it's just not reflected on this right and so i'm just kind of curious if you guys have any recommendations on how how we could better maybe document that so from my perspective, I think the swim center locker room has morphed into a capital project, mm -hmm. right? So my my first inclination is that I mark a cross that out of this mm -hmm. uh, particular mm -hmm. I, uh, nice. list of projects, and it just goes into my capital projects. Mm -hmm. So that's an indication that it's no longer a small community initiated project; it's just become a city capital project, and um, and that would you know eliminate another project. And now we just we're left with just the three or four, right? Uh, in order for it to look like progression, we can just altogether remove all the completed items yeah. from this list as we present it. Then I'm just I've been crossing all of them out. So you have one, two, three, maybe four that are in process of so mm -hmm. 14. We're mm -hmm. complete. We're ready for mm -hmm. the next round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it the other thing is, you know, um how and this is for the next commission to figure out, but making sure when the projects are approved in the fall, you have kind of a way to kind of distinguish the two, right? Um, so that way there's like some sense of like these make, there's a reason these are further along than other ones, um, as opposed to just like project 13 on this list is going to be much further behind than project five <laughs> on this list, right? And so just just putting that out there for something to think about. Yeah. As an add, excuse me, as an add on to that, Joe, the way you described it, I think makes a great deal of sense, given that Measure J has committed funds. The project is morphed; it's evolved. Uh, however, that evolution has this this loop back, where a year later, the Measure J decision is suddenly much more expensive than it was when we made the decision in the first place. That's life. But maybe it makes more sense since we don't control, Measure J doesn't dictate what the project is anymore. And if Measure J is made, has made a decision that we're funding equipment, we're funding exercise equipment, let's, let's do a, a transfer from one sub account to another so that it rolls into capital projects for the mm -hmm. city and measure j is then com has completed its commitment mm -hmm. and we're, we're we're looking forward we're not we're not waiting for when we're going to hear again that there's an hear later that there's another bill due that eats into what other opportunities might exist for the next cycle mm -hmm. and if, that, if that's an if it turns out that that's an equitable way to proceed in municipal finance that how do you pick a number we, we've said let's let's authorize a hundred thousand dollars for for a thing for a project pickleball, pickleball. Yeah. Uh, if it takes one year two years three years longer we don't have to worry about this contingent liability where we're we are where measure j is expected to come forward with more funding that is a surprise and again, that's life, that's business, those are project costs. Uh, but meeting by meeting, we're, we're trying to contemplate how to develop other projects without having this contingent liability for something that we thought we were, we had made our commitment, we thought we were done. Yeah, um, I don't know. 
Chris, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, and I guess the only thing I can really say is that when these came forward, they were all to be vetted, mm -hmm. right? Oh, and sure. the vetting process, be as it may, has taken a very long time. So I'll just use the swim center. We started vetting it, and it started growing, it started growing, and whatever we were committing for as a community initiated project was no longer viable. It really isn't a community initiated project. It morphed yes. into a capital project. So we, as the engineering team, as we promised, we vetted it, and it wasn't viable. The amount that was invested wasn't viable. So it's how how we progressed throughout the community initiated process. And you know, it's, it's for the commission to help us try to figure out, and maybe Chris has some ideas on how to do that and how we deliver that particular application. Say, yeah, I think it was a great application. We approved the, this amount of money, but it really had become. Oh, more market yeah. 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 Yes, and, and it, it grew because of other parties, other voices with a clear interest in a broader scope built momentum to create a broader scope. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it basically was no, yeah, it didn't, it, it, it grew from the small community mm -hmm. initiated project that, you know, it's a one-time thing to a, a bigger project that a lot of other people had <laughs> input on. <laughs> well, I mean, got real excited, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think this is true, right? Like, the reason it grows in scope can vary, but it still grows in scope, right? And so then, you know, where is that original commitment? W when is it vetting? And those prices just naturally increase and when is it because you know it's kind of steamrolls into something much bigger mm -hmm. needed people are excited for it and so and not to discount the how much it grows but I, I i hear what the vice chair is saying that you know we just see projects on here and um and it, it the way they're presented no longer reflects what they've become Right. Yeah. Um, and and it's something we'll have to. I, this, I don't think we're going to find an answer tonight. But yeah. this particular piece has been on here for five years, I think. And I even asked Mr. Crawford, "What are you doing about your gym equipment?" And bless his heart, he said, "I forgot." I yeah. it on the <laughs> uh, so can that roll into like Desert Highland major projects? Should we get it off here? I think that's a conversation we could have with Chris. Okay. But at the end of the day, I would just say too that. If, the morphing part is really probably always sort of going to be a component no matter how much vetting because sometimes it, it's going to happen. But at the end of the day, you're, you're still getting sort of what you all wanted, but because of other things that may be connected to it, it just sometimes makes sense to do that, right? We wouldn't want to come back and say, oh, we've got to take this out now to do this. So mm -hmm. you're, you're still getting there, but sometimes it's not as maybe direct as one might think. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really a great, great. I mean, it's not always as simple, no matter, and Joel probably will say the same thing, it, it, we would love it to be. But at the end of the day, you're going to have a beautiful exercise equipment along with nice. X, Y, and Z. Right? Yeah. David, yeah, would... absolutely correct. <laughs> Except, absolutely correct. And yet, when you buy a car, you don't think you're buying the parking lot. <laughs> 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 and, and And these things happen. Very true, but we would not want to waste your money yes. and take it out yes. right yes. in two years and then right. So we have to spend work. your money wisely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, chuckles aside, some some of these, some of the, the community projects and maybe some of the other capital projects, they just they just stop being what they used to be uh because of a lot of voices. Yeah, and I mean I think the good thing is too that you know Mr. J the, the, the project and Measure J maybe highlighted a need for you know other things at the park. So and then from a finance perspective perspective, if it in the future if it does morph into something larger, what we might do to show that this is a part of a bigger plan is just we would show it as a contribution to the capital fund to fund the bigger plan and we could show it complete from our end. That's really what it is at this point for yeah. all those projects is we are now taking the 270,000 or whatever it is, and we're contributing it to Joel's or Dave's larger projects. And we're just making a contribution to help that project land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this has me thinking, and um, this is gonna be my other question around the budget is the kind of presentation, the summary recap of all Measure J investments. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we say what has been completed, right? What contributions have been completed? And then what are the commitments that we have um, ahead of us still? Mm -hmm. um, and so knowing what's completed and what's a, you know committed uh, is 
is the fine balance on that image. Um, and then can you just give a quick update on that um, kind of year to date, not year to date, uh, program to date? what that summary, like when the commission might be able to look at that and, yeah. and or just kind of how you're thinking about it right now. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about a, a, just a one pager that sort of gives that show of, and, and I envision it being a one pager that shows, uh, you know, our growth in sales tax as a revenue source and then uh, highlighting past projects that are completed and current projects that are in play and future projects that the commission has supported. Um, so that's kind of the way I see it. It does. We do want it to be historical, uh, but we also want it to show current and future. Um, and I think we can do that. It'll, you know, it'll be high level. It'll be major things. Um, but I think it'll potentially give us what I want. And then uh, I hope I'm hoping to bring that back to the commission uh, at the June meeting. Uh, and and maybe I'll throw it in front of uh, you know chair and vice chair just to initial feedback before we come to the next meeting and make some changes to it based on what we see, and then maybe sort of give that high level uh, picture at the next meeting for everybody to uh, comment on. Great. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh, quick question for, for Chris. Um, every month you've been giving us a, a report, two month trading report on sales tax revenues. Um, and you were optimistic at the last meeting that the, the month that now can be reported, which I was probably what February, mm -hmm. that uh, we'd be back on track and be looking favorable for making our budget. How how did February turn out? That's a great segue to the forecast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the forecast, and I'll comment on that. Um, so it's the first page in uh, in the budget that date packet. Again, we'll look at the third column over the darker gray. And so we're projecting sales tax revenue to come in at 21.87 million. Uh, if you look at the prior column and see that 21.94 million, that's the prior year's sales tax number. Um, so we believe at this point, we're going to be flat to last year. Uh, we still think that we'll be down about 3% to our budgeted number. However, Speaking of the latest sales tax figures that came in for uh, the February sales month, which we received in April, two months behind, they were actually better than prior year and uh, actually better than the prior two years. So we were very encouraged to see that number come in where it's at versus what we were seeing very early on in the in the fiscal year. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm fairly confident with uh, four more months to collect that uh, we can reach what we did last year, which is a very good number historically. Um, I'd be surprised if we got to our budget, but I'm still not ruling it out um, based on what we saw last month. And knowing that these next couple of months, uh, March and April, are very are the biggest months for revenue and sales tax and hotel tax for the city. So these are highly uh, trafficked months in our uh, fiscal year. So if they seem to come in greater than last year, then we have a shot at getting budget. But um, but more realistic, I think, will be flat to, to last year on the budget. And just to go, uh, the, the city's portfolio is very strong. Uh, we're earning good interest rates. So you can see the income is scheduled to be 750000 So we think total revenue will be about $22.6 million. Uh, going on down to expenses, we definitely are going to hit the $9 million in streets um, money. Uh, we think the community initiated projects we're going to add another maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars in expenses over the next couple months and remember we only have two months of fiscal year left so um if we add another couple hundred thousand in community initiated project dollars it's pretty good uh we just did the airport reserve to five hundred thousand we go down to the debt then 3.1 million that's our debt service amount for the downtown revitalization debt that was funded by measure j um, and then we've got our downtown maintenance uh, coming in right at budget. I'm going to try to make sure that we don't go over that. If we go over it, I'm going to try to make sure the general fund can absorb it. Uh, I'm going to try. It's going to be the optimum word there. <laughs> and then if go down to the capital expenses at 7.8 million, I think we're going to add another million dollars over what we saw in our year-to-date number. Um, 
whatever we don't uh, achieve to budget, it just really carries over. So it's just a timing difference. We're going to spend that money. It's going to happen. So uh, it's just a timing difference, whether it comes this year or whether it comes next year. And then I'm taking 250 out of our cost overruns. Most of that is the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and then I don't anticipate using anything for Parks and Rec. Uh, and I don't anticipate at this point using anything for communications. A lot of what's going to happen, I think, is going to come out of the communications budget. But we're still offering that money up to our communications team if they need it. Mm -hmm. So we plan on coming in, uh, but the expense is at about $21.9 million. Um, and we expect to have a small surplus of six hundred and seventy thousand, um, and then the fund balance will be at the end of this year around seven point two million. I think that's the guidance I gave the mayor when he asked the question in the council meeting last uh, month or two weeks ago. And then our airport reserve is up to two point seven million. So I think overall the the Measure J fund ending the year at about seven point two million unrestricted dollars. Uh, leaves the commission, uh, this commission or the new commission, open to using some of those funds where it may be needed for other projects that maybe have significant cost overruns. So something for the commission to consider uh, when we get to that point. So overall, you know, I'm I'm envisioning a very good year um, for Measure J, envisioning a good year on the city side as well. But this particular fund, I think, is doing very well. And if we can uh, continue to achieve around $22 million in sales tax going forward, it, it never stays like that. It's still very good historically. And you know, at some point we're gonna get some growth, but uh, you know, 22 million every year is a, is a good number to be able to fund you know, what we have to fund and knowing that we're gonna be funding the library debt and knowing we're gonna be funding the fire station debt, we know that. So um, we have uh, uh, good funds to, to cover those projects as well. I'll take any questions on the forecasting you may have. And, and so the this is two months behind. So this is through February, you said, or March? What? The actual number that we showed on the year to date. Mm -hmm. uh, so sales tax uh, comes in two months behind. Um, we, the CDTFA, the California Tax Commission, gives a month for the businesses to file, and then it gives a month for the state to distribute the funds. So whenever we just we report our sales tax number, it's always through two months ago. So we're through February. So we still have March and April, May and June, but March and April being the big sales tax okay. months that we still have to collect. Any questions for Chris? On the budget or the forecast? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, 22 million for our city infrastructure every year is a good place. Yeah, I mean, it's very. Uh, we started eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a nice increase. We're, we're yeah. staying above 20. It's pretty pretty good. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Um, that takes us to discussion items. Um, so the first is. Um, Item 8A, uh, the official subcommittee to over use, oversee use of funds. So um, I'm going to hand this over to Commissioner Sipkins. You had some ideas around um, kind of maybe a potential smaller body to look at a few projects. If, and uh, thank you, uh, Chair. So I'm not sure that I have a lot of ideas. I just wanted to uh, suggest that we at least discuss the possibility of creating a, a subcommittee or two. Uh, a number of of the things that I had in mind had been sort of discussed already by Vice Chair Robin and others, as uh, I think it's uh, it's important that we get together at least with the subcommittee more often than once a month to meet with Joel and with Chris to try to get updates on exactly where projects are and how Measure J funds have been spent and whether or not they have been blended into larger city capital projects so that we can then have a, a more accurate and informed presentation when we sit down here at the monthly meeting. I know a number of commissions have subcommittees and I thought that it might make sense to have such a subcommittee here. And I think that when we get into the $6 million that uh, the city council has approved for community initiated projects for the next budget year, that um, I don't have, a lot of interest in auditing, for example, what Joel is already doing with city projects. I have great respect for Joel, and I don't want to get into his business at all. But there will be uh, 
community initiated projects that are not city run. In fact, I think at the 1PS meeting earlier this week, uh, the mayor said that he would prefer to see city initiated projects that don't require Joel's time because Joel's already really busy doing his own stuff. And so what are we going to do if there is now without the $500,000 limit, the city council did away with that, if there's a major project that is self-run by whoever the com community project initiator is, who, who's going to keep track of whether or not that money is being well spent and how it's being spent and whether it's, it's going to be done on time. And what, so I think that we need to have a, at least consider and not at tonight's meeting, but sometime in the future, putting together a group that tracks our, what we have budgeted for projects and make sure that particularly with respect to those that are not in Joel's bailiwick, that they're being run properly and that the money is being properly expended. So that's what I had in mind. I have a lot to say about that. <laughs> uh, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I still don't know where the community gardens are. Okay, at schools, I've asked that over and over again. Um, we are enough people around this table, <clears throat> rather than a subcommittee of three people, that after we read our application, you say, <clears throat> I'm interested in that. And that's what I've done from the beginning because I was told by a former uh, person on this committee that she went out and looked at things. And I did that. I, I do that. You learn a lot and you meet the people involved in those projects and you see what's going on. And I think that would make all of us far more active commission than coming here, sitting, listening to your report and going home. We should have agency ourselves that we go out, find something that really uh, you like and you want to find out about and say, I'll take that one, I'll take that one and report out at a meeting. I think a subcommittee figure is just too small and it's a lot of work if we have 50 projects. I really like the idea of visiting the project yourself. The people appreciate you coming out and it's one more step in making a major day known to to the project. <laughs> I went to the swim center and I shared things with you, Joel, that the lifeguards had said to me about the swim center and the safety of themselves at the swim center. And just to walk through the project, you see what's going on. So I, I agree with you, Peter, about we need to know where our money is and isn't really being used effectively. But I'd rather see all of us engaged <coughs> than a subcommittee. And I certainly would not have an objection to a committee of the whole doing what you suggested, but I do think that we're an oversight committee. And I think that once we spend the money, whatever it is on a project, we have an obligation to make sure that the money is being spent properly and as it was submitted to us and as we approved it. Correct. You follow up on the back end of that. I would agree with you. <clears throat> My question is, and I may be going a little ahead, um, but on the application, do we put any pressure on the applicants to update us um, or to provide certain updates so that they could also be responsible to update us on their progress? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Davis, do you want to <laughs> Well, and I'll defer Chris to you, but uh, so for any of those that we're granting or money to for their projects, they're signing an agreement, a contract with the city. So that's something that I think as we get further into this process over the next few months, we can determine what do we want to put in that? Because it we just need to be careful that we're also not micromanaging an organization that is doing a project. So finding that balance between being an oversight, but at the same time, not micromanaging the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I would, my recommendation would be we just start specific about what those requirements are for reporting back, final reports, mm -hmm. anything that we think is necessary. Yeah, I, I do think in the agreement, and I've got to refresh my memory on it, that we have, so whenever we do a project uh, with somebody and they kind of, we're just going to basically gift them a check and they're going to oversee their project, we do have a funding agreement that the uh, organization does sign with the city. And the funding agreement does give us, you know, authority if you ever want to go in and audit, you know, make sure the money was spent appropriately. We typically won't do that unless we have to. Um, but I believe it also, uh, and I'll have to revert, I'll have to 
let me go back and check this, but I believe the agreement does ha have something in it to where they need to check back in with the city or send photos of the completed project with the city, something like that. So let me let me take that back and, and see what, what I can find. I think there's something in there like that, but let me confirm that. Yeah. Um, so what I heard was these are not reimbursable projects. The, the person who is promoting or the organization that's promoting the project receives a check and then they are later accountable for it or they have to expend the money and then be reimbursed for what they spent. And typically not going to work like a grant. So we would we would give them the money up front. That's the way we've done some of this in the past. And and I think this is the a couple distinctions. One is what we require to approve the project, which is the application that the subcommittee has spent a lot of time on. But I think the next phase of that is the oversight and the agreement. And that's all kind of like the next phase of work, which I think is super valid. And I think this is a really important conversation. I think there's a responsibility of us of updating um, applicants as to when it's coming or, you know, th there's not just on the responsibility, not just on the applicant, but also on the commission. Um, but I, but we haven't really looked at that part yet. And I think, I think those are all really um, yeah. important parts of level setting the expectation for the grantees because the whole notion of like a more of a grantee style was fairly new when the last round of community initiated projects it wasn't it was just a handful i think it was just the school district mm -hmm. and myself was there any other ones yeah yeah, yeah and, and myself was i think a regular project it wasn't community initiated right. but those were the two that yeah. come to mind when that we kind of fronted the money and you're right it was that's a great point they were it was a new pro uh, process yeah and so we are kind of building on that momentum that it's a really efficient way to um, release community initiated project dollars uh, without burdening staff. But I think all that oversight on what, what oversight looks like for this commission for those types of um, use of funds is, is still fairly new. And I think, um, yeah, I, I would imagine that's going to be multiple conversations. So you figure out what, what makes the most sense because you're not going to have you know, a representative of an organization come every month the same way we are able to right. ask, no. like, right. our there's, staff, but some um, such updates, of, you know, yeah. like, for, for instance, with the Desert Highland, if it's five years, and then we also take into consideration we had COVID, but there should have been some form of oh updates gosh. going Absolutely. on, or, you know, now it's on hold because we, they have to fix piping or whatever the issue is, mm -hmm. just like in construction loans, before they issue you funds, they need some type of status update mm -hmm. just to ensure that there was progress mm -hmm. or no progress. So mm -hmm. I think that's very important to- And, and I think with. that goes to the reputation of how quickly and efficiently we're able to use Measure J funds, right? When someone applies for something mm -hmm. and they think it's gonna be a project, you know, we say it's, they apply for seventy thousand dollars. Once it's vetted, which takes a year, it ends up being two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But if it's still four or five years later, right. to spend two hundred thousand dollars, that's a long time, mm -hmm. right? And so, oversight would could raise some trends like that that I think are important for us to just know as a body of being responsible for those kinds of funds. Yeah, Mr. Chair, and then we'll go. Sure. Uh, two two thoughts to add to the comments. <clears throat> even though we use the <clears throat> even though we use the, the description or the, the the naming of grants, I think the right way to think about this is these are these are construction loans. Mm -hmm. These are capital projects. It's not for it's not funding programs. It's it's very likely not a reimbursement of, of expenses incurred. So at the right time, when it's the formalization of the agreement between the city and the recipient, there should be a draw process. That's probably normal for contracting with the city. Put that aside, but that, that would be my expectation at the right time that we formalize that as, uh, as part and parcel of the funding. Back to Commissioner Sipkin's recommendation or suggestion about a subcommittee. I think that as and when the commission identifies the projects, given how there's a, a very good chance that there will be some large projects 
whether it be similar to MyZell or something, but at the right time, the commission is going to have enough information to this, to make a decision that these are big enough to need more attention than a once a month or a seat of information. Uh, and that it probably will make really good sense to have a, a body of three, perhaps a good uh, Brown Act a body of three, <laughs> so that there can be real due diligence that occurs uh, and that there's a good flow of information rather than just hearing about something after the fact. And it doesn't that with this idea, it doesn't take away the monthly opportunity for everybody to get their 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 hands into what's going on. But if there are advocates, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. if if I happen to if I if I'm the person really backing a project. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to put my time into that as a liaison type role. That's probably a, a good opportunity if the scale is complex enough, the dollars are big enough that you really need insight into it so that the commission is represented properly outside of once a month, an hour and a half. Yeah, I don't think we need to go every month. I don't mean that at all, but I think, you know drop by at the beginning and take a peek and well, then... and that those those would be just sort of ad, yeah. ad hoc you're, yeah. you're, 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 yeah. you're going about your thing right independently mm -hmm. which is separate from acting as the body yeah uh, and exactly. I, I think i think it would be really important that the commission has formal involvement and it's hard if it's more than three or four right, right. legally hard right uh, right. So to be able to do it in a way that there's real oversight instead of being limited to a once a month report mm -hmm. on certain things. Commissioner Wolfer, thank you. Yeah, um, I just was curious, and this is probably going to get into a bigger conversation down the road, like we were saying about, you know, what that will look like, that um, our expectations of um, report back um, to our grantees. But would it be appropriate to include some kind of expectation of like public acknowledgement? Um, I'm also very interested in like the signage um, at my cell that was really done well. Like, is there similar signage that was done at the school gardens? Um, you know, could we be very clear in like formalizing that and like not just the signage, but also, you know, we're, we're always looking at right ways to like raise community awareness of Measure J, you know, having all these different organizations that like use their, um, their independent channels into the community. If they're talking about Measure J and how that made this project possible, I think that'll really help. Um, so I would just love to see when when, when we have that bigger conversation um, to make sure that we have an eye to that, that aspect as well. Yeah, and I think, Kind of to your point of things that uh, memorialize that mem uh, Measure J contribution uh, in a kind of permanent way. There was a kickoff uh, or like a, I don't know if it was a kickoff, but uh, an event at Cielo Vista mm. um, when the Wellness Center opened. Um, and it was, it's, I, I saw it, it's, I went, it was, it's beautiful. Um, I would love to have my counselor when I was at elementary school have a room like that. Um, but that's just one day, one news cycle, probably nine months ago, right? That's not something that then people will know um, every time they go. And so um, I think that's that's super warranted. Any other? Thoughts? Mr. Clifford said he was going, or you was appointed him as sort of our messenger guy. And I would hope he would report out each month, really, that he meets with the city. At, um, Information and give us a little update what we're doing to show off Major J. I think that would be a good use of his time and a good committee report out from him. Mm -hmm. And I just want to kind of note that, like, we have different kinds of Measure J projects, right? And they might require have different levels of oversight. And so there's these community led organizations, there's projects that are just bigger in scale that because of the sheer dollar amount requires a bit more um, attention and focus perhaps. And so I think as you think about the subcommittee structure, like what what is the criteria that would warrant that extra, that would require and it would be appropriate for the subcommittee to kind of have it on its, um, 
list of projects that they're considering. Um, because I don't think it's every community standard project. I mean, that that's a lot of stuff that we you're 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 funding up to six million. That could be a lot of projects. Um, but um and then sometimes a small project gets bigger. And so um I think I think there's there's a lot more to kind of flesh out, but I think there's something to sit be said as in the in the fall when you kind of have an idea as to how many projects you have, what that oversight could look like. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I would just note too, is we're on a two year budget cycle now, which has really changed the flow of work um, on this commission. And so on the budget cycle year, there's a lot more work to do. Um, and so there's kind of more room now to have a lot of these conversations, but when we're also looking at the community or the capital projects and kind of deciding how much uh, to put each year and you have to, you don't want to get ready for the city council presentation like that's a lot of the spring um and so i just want to put that out there that this is this is a nice mm -hmm. <laughs> calm year mm -hmm. um and, it, and it's exactly why we decided to community initiated projects the application this year because we had the time to, to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other, do you have any other thoughts? No, no, I appreciate the comments from everyone. Thank you. Okay, all right. We'll keep marinating on that a little bit. Um, I, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more discussion on that. So next we have um, 8B, community initiated projects. Um, like I said earlier, uh, staff was able to get that to council two weeks before we were anticipating. Um, and I'll turn over to Chris, if you just wanna give a high level of kind of what those um, the feedback was, and there were a few small tweaks on the application, and then kind of what's next. Yeah, so I think the main uh, thing, and I think everybody probably is already aware, is they wanted the $500,000 cap to be a guideline and not necessarily an inhibitor to maybe a good project that maybe costs more money, which, uh, I, you know, I, 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 there's some really good, you know, um, about that idea. So what I think we need to do is change some of the language in our application to reflect that, that it's a guideline and not necessarily a cap that the application can um, be, you know, uh, for a larger amount. So I think maybe the subcommittee could take a look at some of that language, just change maybe a sentence or two that refers to the $500,000 cap. And then once that, when of course we got to do it by June 3rd, um, but uh, you know, if you can just send a recommendation on what that'll be, we'll change it real quick. Go in front of the city attorney, make sure he's okay with it, and then we'll post it. Mm -hmm. I, I suggest the chair take care of that, since the chair needs to give a final review, anyways. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, happy to. Okay. Yeah, so we'll just wait for whatever you suggest, and then we'll we'll change the application to reflect that. But we're ready to go on the third to post the application. Uh, we've got a lot of inquiries already, so mm -hmm. that's good. I'm sure you all have, too. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was the main thing. Uh, just to reiterate, $6 million in funding, uh, $1.2 million set aside for overages. Um, and uh, the timeline is as is. Uh, it begins June 3rd. Uh, in September 30th, For that's when the application process closes. And then the commission begins to review applications. And uh, we'll make uh, the commission's recommendation for projects to be approved probably sometime in January, because I think we close at the end of January. Wasn't that the timeline? Um, so we'll probably, you know, I, I don't know if we want to, we could talk about it, but we may want to use all the way up to end of January, collect that recommendation to the council, then go to the council for the recommended projects and have them approve it. And then we can put them on the list and go from there. But um, I thought it was a very good job. You know, the, obviously the council is extremely interested in, the community initiated projects as they should be and they i think are really happy with the funding amount this year i mean it's a significant amount of money set aside for projects and so uh very happy and they were very pleased and just congratulations to the subcommittee and the entire commission for a great recommendation to council great and then can you give an update on um the communication check-in with amy yeah so our communications uh um Chief Communications Officer Amy Blaisdell has been out on a conference. And so the initial plan, I know we had some little bit of back and forth on she definitely wants to do a communication of through social media, through the website, through um, um, 
Uh, what's the website that we have? Engage Palms. Right? Yes, Engage Palms. Mm -hmm. like Thank you. Should know that by now. Uh, <laughs> but she's going to use all those avenues of communication to make sure she gets it out there about the opening date and the timeline for the application process. So we just briefly talked about that. Um, and uh, so I did say that, you know, maybe uh, chair that she wanted to touch base with you to, to talk about any other ideas that, that you may have want to float out there for her. She's very open to that. Um, and she just got back uh, this afternoon. So I, you know, she said that she would try to get back to uh, Chair Soto in the next week or two to really formalize that plan. Um, and I'll try to facilitate a, a meeting as well um, so we can share ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, uh, getting the communication out there for the opening of the application process on June 3rd is important, but uh, keeping the communication up as well throughout mm -hmm. the application yeah. process is also important. So, um, uh, maybe we can get uh, Amy here uh, at, a, at a meeting in June to talk just a little bit more in detail about what that kind of plan is uh, throughout the timeline of the process. Um, and then we can always go from there. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And I um, I mentioned this at, at any neighborhood group leader that I've been interacting or any other organization um, and really kind of stressing the collaboration and like due diligence and vetting that the commission is really expecting in this next round of applications um, because that's that's fairly new. And so it's gonna take um, some reminders of this, you know, this looks like a sustainability project. Have you checked in with sustainability? Mm -hmm. Have you presented this to sustainability commission? Um, and so um, that's part of my um, messaging. And if anybody is having conversations about community initiated projects, really kind of underscoring that um, because it's it's not just, it's not something you can just like kind of fill out on a Friday, Thursday afternoon and send in and have the most, you know, kind of um, the, the best chance to get, to get funded. And so um, it takes time to get onto an agenda and kind of meet with anybody who needs to. So, um, I think that's part of the messaging, not just like the amount, but um, a little bit of support um, on on things they should might want to think about. Um, so that's part of my message. Yeah. Um, one thought that I had with reference to the community initiated projects was because of the the amount and the new uh, approach that perhaps the commission would do a couple of community meetings as opposed to mm -hmm. conversations at different places but do a couple of formal meetings and invite people to come there and say this is you know, this is the process this is the best way to approach it these are the people that if you want to talk with something talk to somebody about it who you should talk to mm -hmm. so we again set the expectations and and so they know what path to follow. Yeah, I love that. Plus, is there any like we've never hosted a forum or a meeting? Mm -hmm. I don't. At least not in my time. Is there any either? <laughs> um, we used to do things with PS Forum. Yeah, yeah. Of saying, and when, we definitely presented at groups, but I don't know if we've ever like hosted something where then community members were invited, other than just they can come here. I guess. Yes. I uh, had. Uh, the last after the last meeting, uh, Chair Soto offered her services, <laughs> perhaps inadvisedly, at at uh, a one PS meeting, and I communicated to the current chair of one PS that Chair Soto would be willing to go to the June meeting and yeah. explain community initiated projects and the the application process and so forth. So expect a call for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's in process i did have another question though for chris and this is a follow-up on on vice chair robin's suggestion on on grants what's the real feasibility of you doing a drawdown process as opposed to issuing a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar check to somebody and we had put some thought into it because you know it would be uh, a process typically a drawdown is almost like a reimbursement process where they would get it to a point, submit us some documentation up to their expenses, and we would basically reimburse them for uh, for that. So um, we we could you know we that's something that we can discuss as a commission if that's what we want to go. We can do a drawdown process. Um, we can do other things in the funding agreement as well to ensure that we stay close to the project. 
Uh, we could ask for progress reports. We could do some things like that. So, um, you know, we, we I think that's something that we as a commission should decide upon. And as Chair said, you know, as we get closer to finalizing some of the things, I think we should approach that discussion. Yes. Yes. Um, I think that that would be helpful, like the sooner that we can just decide on that general framework to make that information available and just even some kind of FAQ. I know like from the nonprofit world, there's so many grants that we might look at and you know, some of the reporting requirements can be just really onerous. So it's like, you know, some some grants, it's like, well, that's great, but I don't even have the capacity to apply for that grant. I think that, you know, if I didn't really know any different, I would just assume that something like this coming from the city would probably be, you know, really intensive in terms of reporting and right. auditing. And I would just, you know, and, and so I think that that would be really helpful information. You know, we don't have to have every detail, but as soon as we can kind of get the the basics of that information out to people, that would be really helpful. Um, I also, I was gonna raise the exact same um, suggestion, suggestion as Commissioner Newby, um, again, kind of thinking about, you know, what we've seen in terms of like, you know, state grants or even like larger foundation grants, like there's always, typically like a webinar or like some kind of meeting where people can come in and even if it's not participatory just to kind of like get like more information and sort of like get walked through the whole process I think that that might be again either like in person probably makes more sense um, but something like that I think could be I, I realize it's probably maybe now a little late in the game and I, I don't know kind of what the staff capacity is for something like that um, or how much we can do ourselves as commissioners but um you know, I think it's really exciting to be able to, to 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 grant funds, right, and not increase the burden and not have so many projects that we're having to like worry about for five years. But um, I think that in order to have you know really robust applications and participation from a wide variety of people in the community, and especially again, like we've discussed in the past, from like an equity lens, you know, that we we want to hear from people that are seeing things in their community that they want to approve, but or looking at a process like this as something that's very alien to their everyday experience. And so the more that we can make this as accessible as possible, I think that that will really benefit this round of projects. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, the other thing I would just note too, is this is new for staff, like the other departments too. And so I just kind of want to flag that as like, what type of education and awareness do we have to do with like sustainability or public works or because people might come to them with questions, right? And so it's going to be important that key staff know that this is something like we're encouraging people to ask questions we should let the people who are going to have to answer questions know that <laughs> <laughs> um and um and so i just want to be mindful of that uh there might be some internal <laughs> stuff we should also do this is a crazy question but if you're on a board or you're a member of an organization or intimately involved with people who apply, we need to recuse ourselves. Am I correct? <laughs> from okay. yeah, if, from if, the discussion and the voting on that on that project. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. That's correct. And we actually just got that communication handed out from the city attorney's office today. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that yeah, if, if that would be really, I actually was thinking that if we could have a little more detail, that would be helpful because I know like a lot of us, it's a small town and we're all involved in so many different things. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, I I know it's gonna be different than like the typical like financial involvement, right? Mm -hmm. It's like so that would yeah, more detail on that would be great. Yeah, we can bring right. back more detail, but essentially it's if you have an interest in an organization organization that is say uh, filing a community initiated project you need to recuse yourself from that vote or or you know uh, or uh, of reviewing that application yeah and I, I would thank you for that important clarification because I think your networks and your community or our respective networks we add value by being able to share our expertise at measure J to our respective neighbors and communities and colleagues but then as you're saying that, but then there's the actual like voting and allocation, then you would have to recuse yourself. So I, you know, I want to encourage everyone to kind of promote the application, but then realize there's a difference between promoting the application to, to your community members and your colleagues versus like actual voting on the application itself. And so, mm -hmm. um, so I, I think make that's that a real answer to last year's problem, perhaps mm -hmm. being as transparent and as 
up front as we possibly can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so then in terms of net action items, I'm going to make that small tweak, send that back. We'll send it to the city attorney um, and get it going. And then I'll follow up with Amy and check in with Chris with one of the yes. Um, and, and just all, all the other ones. Um, and if there's any events, meetings or anything that I can't do, I'll like send it to you, Melissa. Maybe you can kind of send it to the group and we can find someone to attend or something. Yeah, great. Okay. okay. Um, Love the robust conversation. Next, we have commissioner member and comments and requests. Is there anything that, in general, feedback or thoughts that anybody wants to share? Yes. Again, I, I, I don't want to take over the, the meeting, but <laughs> at the 1 PS meeting on Tuesday, the mayor announced, and I don't know how many of the commissioners on this commission know about it, announced that there will be a all commission Yes, thank dinner, you. I believe, oh. at the convention center on June 11th. I'm not sure that's the right date. But I, it's June 17th, right? June 17th. June 17th. June 17th. Yeah. I'm like and, rearranging my life for June 17th. Yeah, and I, I just thought that everybody ought to know about it because I haven't seen it publicized elsewhere. So, and I'm assuming that uh, some of the questions that were just uh, raised about conflicts of interest and recusal will be one of the topics that will be discussed that evening. But mm -hmm. so yeah, um, <laughs> we were going to bring that up. So thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, and I, I hope I thought I emailed you sure sort of, but I don't know if I did or not. Oh, Melissa, I oh did. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So just to just to comment on that briefly, June, uh, June 17th, the entire commission is uh, welcome to attend. Um, Sure, Soto is going to make the presentation. It'll be uh, short and sweet, is what they have requested, just on the prior year's accomplishments. Uh, they don't really want you to get into the future, but just prior year accomplishments. We'll be more than happy to help with that presentation in any manner that you need. I know you've done some on your own, so you probably have a standard thing that you mm -hmm. use, but uh, we're more than happy to help you on any of that. But all commissions, it's going to be at the convention center. Uh, there will be a dinner held, and I believe the dinner is at five o'clock. Uh, it's for an hour, uh, last till six o'clock, and then they move into one of the convention center rooms, the large rooms for the presentations. Mm -hmm. And each commission will give uh, a short presentation about uh, what they've accomplished in the prior year. That's fun. You know, one of the comments coming up here <coughs> at council was the discussion about aligning and looking at commission and um, how to get it more organized, more think what we're doing, so we're all sort of on the same page throughout the city. I find that a very good idea. Yeah, um, yeah what Commissioner Butter is mentioning is uh, not specifically tied to community initiated projects, but it was an agenda item on kind of the scope and kind of work of commissions overall. Um, and one of the suggestions was like kind of having a strategic plan, like what are, what are commissions actually working on? What's their plan um, and presenting it kind of earlier in the year. So that way council, and there was also a lot of conversation that was like a point of contact and like how to um, get feedback from council um, as a commission as well. So definitely recommend um, kind of watching that council meeting. Um, I, that's really helpful to keep in mind. I am like extremely proud of the work that this commission has done and my years on it, it has felt like every year we learn and we adapt and we kind of try new processes and staff is really great about, you know, like what if we can have this column and, and things like that. Um, but then how do we make sure that that's kind of captured in a way that council really gets all the work that we're doing. And so that there, there's some level of, this is how we're doing things right now. Like, does this don't make sense? And if there's any um, um, uh, change in direction, we're kind of getting that feedback earlier, um, especially since the kind of that joint commission council meeting isn't happening every year. That was kind of like the time we, I don't, I don't know if I share how you feel, but it felt like the time where we would get the most alignment with council was in those joint council meetings. And so having kind of a more, kind of regular time in which every commission is kind of doing something, not necessarily in a meeting, but getting an alignment, I think could be really valuable. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of new stuff happening. There's these grantees and oversight and a potential, you know, how we're thinking about small projects that roll into big projects. And so um, I think we're still waiting for feedback on exactly what that will look like for commissions in terms of that 
dialogue and alignment with council, but um, with all this new new work really on this commission, that's going to be important that we're able to kind of take that and doc document it and communicate it to council in a way prior to them seeing like come January, all of our projects, right? Um, so we can hear that earlier. So, okay, yeah. Um, June 17th, hope to see you at dinner. Um, <laughs> thank you for, for reminding us on that. Um, any other updates, finance? No, uh, I'll just say that we'll send out an email to the commissioners on the, gen, uh, the June 17th meeting, just so you have the context of the times, the dates and everything, different place locations. So we'll get that communication out to you all in the next, uh, very soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll adjourn um, 14 minutes early. Thanks everybody.